ladies and gentlemen, I was very impressed with the in-depth of the research done. It is so uh, well put together that it should even stop us from discussing further. Uh, Imani is saying that they eat data. And what do they do with data again? What, what do they say about data? They sleep with data. And we produce evidence. Uh, may I also add something that I also believe that data is stronger than the devil. <laughs> so continue to bring us data so that it will help us shape our thinking and move the nation forward. So I am impressed with what's been done. But if you want me to develop a few things, I'll do yes, it later. Yes, please go ahead. Okay. You, you now, um, I do not think that the sense of local content is lost on anybody. You have um, have the times an impoverished environment, economic environment, that there is a foreign intervention. But in order, in order not to shortchange the local people, let's see how they fit into the overall strength of the foreign uh, investor. That is my sense of it. So in a scenario in which um, there is local strength and there's local competitiveness and we have the competitive edge, then the whole concept of um, local content becomes redundant. It doesn't matter at all. And I think it is very important to pay regard to uh, the only definition we have about local content. There have been a lot of importation as to what it means. The only relevant law we have is the LI 2204. And if you'll permit me briefly, I'll let you understand that it's been defined from our perspective. And I want to quote it. LI 2204, it touches on the oil and gas industry, seeks to promote the maximization of value addition and job creation through the use of local expertise, goods, services, business, and financing in the petroleum industry, value chain, and their retention in the country. Develop local capacity in the petroleum industry value chain through education, skills, transfer, and expertise development. Transfer of technology know-how, active research and development programs, achieve the minimum local employment level and in-country spend for the provision of the goods and services in the petroleum industry value chain, increase the capability and international competitiveness of domestic businesses, and achieve and attain a degree of control for Ghanaians over development initiative for local shareholders. And the rest of it are well stated and articulated. I am of the humble view that we should have um, uh, an overhaul of the corpus of the laws for local content. I do not believe that we should just look at the oil and gas. Do we have a mother document which is of legislative consequence, which gives us the broad outlines of um, um, uh, local content? And then, um, where it is situation specific, we can extract legislative instruments from the statutory instrument. So this is something that we should look at. If not, what we're going to have is what the lady underlined. Mining has the understanding of local content. This other dimension, industry is struggling to have local content. And there will be a whole confusion as to what local content is by operation of law. I believe it shouldn't be a policy. It should be elevated to law. And that is when we have the bite, consistency, and the comprehension. Um, I want to maybe state a position about where I am, because I wouldn't want to pretend and understand local content across board. So if you permit me, where I am sitting now as the minister, some of the things I've seen about local content. The first is that um, if you are not careful um, it becomes a fetish, what local content is all about. It becomes a populist thing, trying to make political capital when they've not developed what it takes to bring them on board. For instance, I have seen world-class Ghanaian architects and the structures that they've designed, the kind of, um, 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 what's it called, the jobs they are doing. And it seems to me that you have Foreigners who bring in their world-class architecture also. But they do not go through the architectural council to certify them that what they are bringing into this country 
I mean, I mean, I mean, it's very good. So we open the door for foreign architects to come in here. They are not licensed to practice here, and they, they come and do business here. And we are pressing very hard that unless you can pass through our laws of architecture, we should leave this business to our people. And if you, you care to know, you can hide them. The foreign, I mean, I mean investor could hide the local architects and be shocked the kind of jobs that they can do. And that is going to help us tremendously. We want the, bl the, the blend. The local people are extremely good. We should use them, especially in the area of architecture. I believe is, is one area that we are looking at from my ministry. Now, in the area of building and construction, we have real challenges. If you pay regard to modern housing construction, they are mo moving from the traditional way of building to another level in which a factory is sited to do prefabricated material. And if you care to know, some of the uh, factories who roll out the uh, prefabricated material for the construction. And the time allocation for the construction is shortened. Because instead of you going in a way, they bring certain um, levels of prefabricated stuff, they just hit the ground and they are going. Are we ready to I mean, bring our people to this kind of level? I think there's a challenge there, seriously speaking in trying to get prefabricated levels of construction in Ghana and our construction industry should wake up to that. The next one of chief concern to me is drainage and, and, and sewage. Where is the local content when Israeli architecture is saying that, I mean, this huge I mean, hotel we have, they will not disturb the integrity of the structure. They will go underground. And every felt of consequence you go underground. That's the modern trend. I wonder which of our um, local engineers will be able to come strong and say that, well, this dimension, I will take it up. If we give them the jobs also, the end result is that they will hire these people to come and do the jobs. So we need to up our game. I want to talk about um, um, coastal protection. And then I, I, prof I add on to what you've said about the solutions. Relating to coastal protection, we are aware of how the sea is so ferocious eating our lands. The local people are doing well. Why? We have the raw material in the backyard, uh, the boulders in the I mean, uh, concessions we give them. So they, they blast the boulders and bring the boulders to um, um, the shore to protect the sea from coming onto the land. The modern trends are that that is very rudimentary. The cheapest thing to do is to lift boulders and drop them in the sea. What they are doing is that they are pushing the sea backwards. Local content is being challenged here. Are we powerful enough to push the sea backwards? Reclaim the land where the sea is occupying. Erect um, a world-class hotel um, overseeing um, 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 the sea so that you have uh, individuals coming to Ghana that the sheer fact that when you are on the 10th floor of a structure, a world-class hotel, you will see the beaches. Clean, decent people even can come and swim midnight if they have to swim midnight. So what do we do? Are we going to say in the name of local content we shouldn't use the best of technology to improve the economy. It's a real challenge that, as my brother was saying, that in terms of uh, construction industry and if you want to do the wet analysis, you find 90% skewed in favor of the foreigners and just 10%. Somebody said, in terms of our democratic governance, it's an insult. But I'm afraid, um, what are you going to do if the local person is not building capacity? Now, are you going to say that we shouldn't build capacity so that they compete favorably with the foreigners? Because we want the money to stay here. My last statement is that if local content is of consequence to the nation, I propose that there should be a budget line. Every year, the Minister of Finance will have a budget line and see how we bring our locals to that competitive edge. 
So we have money for that. If we are not able to build our own, and we want to just look at it from the perspective that this is a new colonial arrangement, and here we are, we are foreigners coming to do serious things and um, taking all the profit margins away, I'm afraid this uh, this functional arrangement will continue because local content I will submit should not hold sway over excellent deliveries. I believe in that. Because it becomes very expensive to promote a local arrangement and it's shortly done. And it costs the nation more in the long run. So let's have a whole arrangement in which the local content is being supported in terms of governmental intervention. Where do we find um, the individuals who want to, or the companies who want to do local participation, and how do we enhance their uh, capacities? Are we able to pay for that? Are we able to give them the best quality, modern trends and training? So when you bring, excuse me to say, an Israeli I mean, a, a construction arrangement here, they will be able to teach them. I've seen a few of our Ghanaians teaching World Bank as to how to solve the other uh, challenges. Very good engineers. But the question is, if they didn't have the same exposure, and I, I, when I interrogated it, they had the exposure from the World Bank itself. So these are uh, retired World Bank consultants helping the World Bank do the jobs. So I think what we should do, and it's very, very, very significant, is that let's pay good monies to up our game. If not, I do not see why you should complain that I do not have the expertise. When you have challenges well, with your teeth, you don't give it to a carpenter. You give it to a dentist. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. ...to be included in such a broader law as you are suggesting. And also, you said that local content should not hold sway over excellent delivery. And you cited the example of, say, if you are having a huge construction project which requires an uh, Israeli who has the competence. But if you look at your sector very well, local content losses are being, being made at even the lowest level. So these days, if you need the best stylist, like this nice styles you've seen here, you see a lot of contractors going for Togolese um, tireless to come and do these things. In this regard, what is your position and how are you planning to fix some of these things? Well, in, in the construction industry, I will tell you that I do not think we are very disadvantaged in terms of local content. The only thing that you see is that if the whole structure is gangantuan, if you like, and it will baffle some people as to what kind of cranes and, uh, with respect, the um, machinery that is required that you will need a foreigner to bring these high levels of machinery. But as to the local jobs, block laying, even painting or designing of some consequence, I can assure you that it's never, 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 never deficient in the construction sector as I've come to inherit it. And this is what they are doing. They've also realized that it's cheaper to hire um, subcontractors of, of, of the local economy to help them out, and then that will show up their profits in the long run. Okay. And this is what is available. Okay. All right. Thank you.